Today we're going to look at this. It's the Flare Neo. And I'll tell you why I'd recommend it, even though I'm going to be a bit critical of the espresso that it makes. This is the new offering from Flare. It's one of the latest offerings. They launched it on Kickstarter. I picked it up there for $89. Now it's now listing at $120. So it's their bottom end. It's their entry level point into Lever Espresso making with a Flare. And to achieve that price point, they've stripped out a few things. You don't get the fancy carrying case. There's not lots of nice colors. You get either a kind of gray or a white unit, and there's just one color throughout. And they've made one other significant change to it as well. Now I've looked at the flare in a previous video, uh, and we'll kind of cover some of the same ground, but really we're trying to focus on this, the Neo, and what's new. Now the way a flare works is pretty simple. You have three kind of main parts. At the base here, where your coffee goes, is, uh, is your kind of brew basket. Now this will take, they say up to 18 grams. I've only really found success in the kind of 15 gram range for lighter espresso roasts. So your tamped puck would go in here. There's a little dispersion screen that sits on top when you brew. You have your brew chamber, which will sit on top. You'd fill that with water, hot water straight from the boil. You'd put your plunger or your piston piece on top, and then you'd use the machine to drive the piston push water through coffee. With this particular one here, this uses their what they call their standard size. They do do the Flare Pro, which is a little bit bigger and can take more coffee, but this is the standard size basket. This red one is interesting because in their words, it's a flow control basket. Now that's not about messing with pressure. This is basically a pressurized water filter. Now it may look like a normal basket at the bottom there, but all of the coffee ultimately gets restricted through one small hole at the bottom. Pressurized water filters exist because of one fundamental truth. Great espresso requires a good grinder, and you can't really get around that. What pressurized portafilters try to do is give you the best espresso possible with incorrectly ground coffee. Unevenly ground coffee, coarsely ground coffee, it doesn't really matter, but either way, that's what they're trying to do. And they do that by providing the resistance that the coffee itself can't. In espresso brewing, that finely ground, compacted puck of coffee provides a lot of resistance to the water. It means your contact time is generally 25 to 30 seconds. With a pressurized water filter, the coffee can't provide the resistance, so the filter itself does. It's, it's sort of extra resistance to the pressure generated either with a pump or the lever on your espresso machine. So to kick us off, I'm gonna start with some relatively coarsely ground coffee, but it will be ground pretty well. I'm gonna use the EG1 back here uh, and grind some kind of V60 grind coffee and see what kind of an espresso we get out of it with a porta filter like this. And along the way, we'll talk through brewing with the flare uh, and some of the kind of techniques or requirements of, of getting good results here. With any manual lever espresso machine like this, which doesn't have any electricity or heating elements in there, well, you're gonna have to do some thermal management yourself. Here, we're gonna need to preheat our brew chamber. So this, turn it upside down to do it, because that's where the little holdy tab is on the side. Boil some water uh, and pour and let it soak. Now, the brew chamber itself has a decent thermal mass. It's pretty heavy, which means if it's not very hot, it will just suck temperature out of your brew water, and you'll definitely have a low temp brew, and you'll have a less enjoyable espresso as a result. So you kind of want to make this as hot as you possibly can. And get on with prepping your basket. It does come with a nice little funnel, and then I can uh, dose some coffee. Now, this is very, very coarsely ground coffee but I'm gonna tamp it the first time with this in place just to kind of keep this as mess free as I can. This is the most adorable little tamper. And so you'd load your little shower screen on top, like so, we'll put some fresh water in the kettle, boil it, get ready to go. So once you're ready, fill, there is a little fill line in here. It's not the easiest to see, but that's your sort of max fill line to make sure that you can safely get your plunger on top. And once you're there, you can now begin to press. So we'll press gently until we get those first drops of coffee and then I'll apply a bit of pressure. Now what makes pressurized port filters so interesting to people is all of that lovely crema. 
because we've created this artificial resistance, it's, it's meant that we can build up very high pressures in the brew chamber. High pressures cause a lot of CO2 to be dissolved in water, it becomes super saturated, and that's what creates crema. I did make a video about this, it's up here if you want to watch that. So it looks like a nice shot, sort of. The creme is very pale though, but how does it taste? I should stir it. It tastes okay. It doesn't taste great because the coffee is too coarsely ground, and I can't really get around that. If I'd put those same grounds into a, a more conventional machine with a normal basket and pulled a shot at nine bars, the results would be undrinkable. They'd be sour, channely, horrible, disgusting, thin. This has some texture, it has some body, it has some extraction. It doesn't have the real intensity of good espresso, and it doesn't feel particularly well extracted. But it's not bad. The pressurized portafilter has saved it from disaster. And certainly with more developed roasts, darker roasts, you'd have much less of an issue with sort of a dominant acidity here. As a little experiment, I'm going to pull one more shot using this. It's the Time War hand grinder. Uh, and it's not set to espresso espresso because it's not that easy to dial in, but it's really pretty fine. And we'll see if that, plus the flow control basket, gets us to a better espresso. Water in. Again, I'm just going to look for those first couple drops and then I'll apply a bit of pressure. So that crema looked a bit darker, shot flowed a little slower. And yeah, that finer grind has helped, but that's not really truly espresso tasting to me. And, and that's kind of what the flow controlled sort of brew basket on this thing is. It will save you from disaster but it will sort of prevent you from reaching the highest highs of espresso. So I said at the beginning, I would recommend this thing. Well, why is that? The thing that I like most about this particular setup is ultimately it's modular. I can change pieces in and out and have a different experience and have different results. For my $120, you know, I'm getting the base frame, I'm getting some essentials of the brewing process, but there are parts that I can upgrade. The first upgrade that I would absolutely recommend is this. It's a normal brew basket. It looks like it's got a sort of single spout, but underneath you can see that it's a regular basket and, and we can use it as a regular basket. We'll need a proper espresso ground in this thing. So that's $24 and I think a great investment. And in addition, I can add one of these. It's a pressure gauge. Now there's a couple extra pieces to go with it. There's a part that I have to put on top of my brew chamber to seat this in, but this will give me live feedback on the pressure that I'm generating when I pull the lever. This is $56, and again, I think a great return on investment comes from picking up this part. Let me be clear, I don't think Flair are trying to pull a bait and switch here. I don't think they're saying, hey, all you need is here for 120 bucks, and then you buy it, and then they're like, well, actually, you need to spend another 24 here, another 56 here, and it's not a $120 machine, it's a $200 machine. I don't think they're doing that. I think they're actually being very clear about who the Neo is for and, and, and what it does and what it doesn't do that well. Now, what I like about this is the fact that espresso is a hobby, and I talk about this a lot. Don't, don't start making espresso at home if you don't want it to become a hobby. Uh, and the challenge with that is that you often have to spend really quite a lot of money to decide if you want this to be a hobby or not. Now, you've watched me make an espresso with this thing, so you know there's a few steps involved. There's preheating, there's kind of faffing about. It's a little bit convoluted. That process doesn't really change after you upgrade things like the brew basket or the pressure gauge, it's still a little bit of work. But you'll be able to dip a toe for $120, get some good, if not flawless results from it, and decide if it's worth that additional investment to you. It's a sort of easy entry point into the world of lever manual espresso. And I like that about it. So what I'll do now is I'll, I'll reset a little bit and then I'll switch to this setup with the normal brew basket and the pressure gauge, and I'll switch to this grinder that's dialed in uh, at a much finer setting, and we'll pull a shot that way and we'll talk about that. Now I did say we have to change the brew chamber slightly. When you preheat, you need this part of the piston in at the top. And again, you're gonna turn it over to preheat. Any additional mass is gonna make preheating more and more important. So we'll let that soak for a while. I'll boil some fresh water for our shot. I'm only using 15 grams here and they recommend up to 18. And I think that is way too high of a dose. They say even more for the Flare Pro, which has a bigger basket. But here I had the best results at 15 or even lower. And your brew ratio, in terms of how much espresso liquid you're going to produce, that's pretty much determined by the size of the brew chamber, so there's not a ton of flexibility there either. 
Generally, I've had good results at a two to one with 15 grams of coffee, producing about 30 grams of espresso. And with the pressurized portafilter, I wasn't weighing my output because ultimately I'm not brewing with the kind of detail and focus uh, as I would do normally. But once we're switched to a normal basket, then yes, I'm gonna pay a lot more attention to my ratios and make sure that I weigh the liquid coming out from the basket. Brew chamber on top, liquid in, that little part of the piston. Pop you on top, once over, you can see the gauge. And again, a little pre-infusion till we meet some resistance. First drops through. Twist this out, because there are pretty much always drips and that's a little bit annoying, I guess. The drip tray on this one is not as nice as you can get in the more expensive flares. So just have a cup or something around for that part of the process. And that's a much more espresso espresso. The concentration is much higher, way more texture. That body is really nice. It's soft, it's creamy, it's extracted, it's sweet. I've had some very nice espresso out of this and having a pressure gauge to work with is helpful. Having a proper basket is helpful. And you could argue, am I still reviewing the Flare Neo though? Is this now more like a Flare Classic? Have I bait and switched you with this review? But I really do see this being the evolution that a lot of people who buy a Neo will go on. I think initially they'll be happy with what they've got, but soon they'll want more. They'll want to invest a little bit more. I don't think $24 for a brew basket or $56 for a pressure gauge is a big ask. And I'm not saying it's cheap. I'm not saying $120 is cheap. It's still a substantial investment. And by this point, you've dropped $200. You've dropped more money than you would do on some of the pumped espresso machines that I've talked about in the past that have elements and pumps inside them that do a lot of this work for you. And they might seem like great value for a second, but they don't produce the quality of espresso that this can. You can get really nice shots out of this if you're willing to do a little bit of work. And so that's the Flare Neo Espresso Maker. I think it's a great little platform. It's a great little ecosystem to get into. Now, there are other lever espresso machines out there that require the input of boiling water, ground coffee, and your effort. And it's kind of up to you which one of those has a process that suits you the most. They all preheat differently. They all brew a little differently. They are all capable of some fantastic results. You know, I did a review of the Flare a few years ago, and I complained pretty heavily about the process, about having to preheat all the bits and pieces, taking it apart, putting it together. And a lot of you in the comments said, I don't care. I like the espresso I get out of it. I'm willing to put the time and effort into it. And for me, it's worthwhile. And so I, I can't answer that question for you. I can't tell you which is the best looking one because that's my opinion. I can't tell you which one is the easiest to use because they all have their quirks and different kind of pain points inside them. This, I think, is a great little ecosystem to get into. You know, I think that's the right word to talk about. Getting in here and upgrading bits and pieces as you go, you can add in a drip tray, add in a brew chamber, add in a pressure gauge. All of that stuff I think is very cool, but I do need to be clear. At the base model, the Neo, it's a pressurized portafilter, and that does cap the quality of your espresso. This doesn't give you a cheat around the need for a great grinder to produce great espresso. You can't cheat that fact. It just is the way of the world. And so as long as you understand that you'll get good but not great espresso from it, that you'll want to upgrade and need to upgrade both the portafilter basket here and your potential grinder there to get truly great espresso, as long as you're okay with that, then I would absolutely recommend this as a great starting point for manual espresso making at home. But I don't get to keep this one. I get to give it away to one of my Patreon supporters who give me a budget each month to go and buy these things so I'm not reliant on manufacturers giving them to me and I can give you unbiased reviews. But now I wanna hear from you. Did you pick one of these up in the Kickstarter? Have you upgraded it already or are you still using the base model? Did you go for a different flare? Are you using it every day? Are you frustrated by different things to me? I'd love to hear from you about your experiences brewing espresso with the flare. But for now, I'll say thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a great day.